Now the next major question is, does this work in people? We've started to answer that question by looking at the level of circulating TGF-beta in people with Marfan syndrome. And you can see that it's really high compared to people without Marfan syndrome, shown in green. In this particular uh, study, uh, there were some people uh, with Marfan syndrome who were on Lozartan, but we had no information about what dose they were receiving or how long they had been on Lozartan. Somebody could have only been on it for a day. Uh, but in any, in any event, we could see despite the fact that there was no standardization of dose of Lozartan, uh, there was a significant decrease in the amount of circulating TGF-beta. So this, uh, this work in people is ongoing uh, with a, a collaborator named Jenny Van Eyck at Johns Hopkins. We're now answering whether this circulating level of TGF-beta is going to be a good prognostic marker in people people with Marfan syndrome, and importantly, we're asking the question, is it a good marker for people with Lowy's Dietz syndrome? So uh, again, we're building from our experience with Marfan syndrome. So, you know, there is a lot of controversy out there. Some doctors are pounding the table and saying ACE inhibitors are better. Others are saying no angiotensin receptor blockers like Lozartan are better. And uh, we felt that we really needed to answer this question. We would have, uh, some people argued ACE inhibitors are better because this type 2 pathway is not really protective, that we're way off base. Uh, we're arguing that Lozartan is better because it's uh, stimulating signaling through this protective pathway. And up until this point, it's just been people arguing arguing across the table without any information. So we decided that we're going to answer this question. And the way that we answered the question was something that, again, we can do in mice and not in people. We simply eliminated the gene for the AT2 receptor. So these mice no longer make any of that receptor in their body. Our prediction is that those mice would do worse because they're lacking a protective pathway. The alternative view was that they would do better. So we could now answer the question. And the answer is that they do do worse. So here in dark red, I'm showing you Marfan mice that lack the AT2 receptor versus in light red, Marfan mice that retain this signaling pathway. And you can see that at every age that we looked at, the mice that lack the receptor have bigger aortas than the Marfan mice that have the receptor. So that let us know that this is our friend, that we need to protect that side of the signaling pathway, and therefore angiotensin receptor blockers should do better. We went on to look at the aortic wall in mice, Marfan mice that either had the receptor or that were lacking the receptor, called a knockout of the receptor. And you can see that their aortic wall looks much worse than Marfan mice that retain this protective receptor. Uh, we, uh, we quantified this and showed that the, my, the uh, Marfan mice lacking the receptor had worse architecture of their aortic wall. If, if someone looked at it, they said that looks bad. And we also found that the amount of elastic fibers was decreased compared to Marfan mice that kept this receptor. We then went on to do uh, the most clinically relevant way of answering this question. We either treated our mice with high doses of the ACE inhibitor called enalapril or the angiotensin receptor blocker Lozartan. And we asked, which did better? And the answer was that Lozartan, now at the doses that we're using in mice, caused the aorta to get smaller over time. It's actually shrinking. Whereas in mice that received the ACE inhibitor enalapril, you still saw that they had very big aortas, so it wasn't doing the job. Finally, we asked whether this AT2 receptor is actually needed for Lozartan to have its effect. Does it only need to block this side of the pathway, or does it actually need to stimulate this other side of the pathway? And the answer is that it is needed. If you knock out this AT2 receptor, Lozartan loses much of its protective effect. 
So I, I think that based upon this, we're on pretty firm ground to say that angiotensin receptor blockers like Lozartan are better than ACE inhibitors. And in fact, they shouldn't even be given along with ACE inhibitors. You need this pathway to be intact, so you don't want to block it. Um, we uh, looked at our mice that lacked this AT2 receptor and found that they died much more quickly from aortic rupture. So again, driving home the message that not every blood pressure is, medication is equivalent. Uh, don't let your doctor say, oh, they're all the same. We'll just use, we'll just pick this one. Uh, have them look at the data. Um, uh, ha challenge them to prove to you that they're putting you on the best medication. So I'll skip that. So what about my the mitral valve? The mitral valve is the valve on the left side of the heart between the upper collecting chamber and the lower pumping chamber. In people with Marfan syndrome, just like people with Loewy's Dietz syndrome, this valve can get thick, it can get floppy, and it can start to leak. And if it leaks very badly, it can put so much strain on the heart that the heart can't keep up with the extra work that you're asking it to do. So initially, we didn't have a good way of monitoring the mitral valve. Uh, but this very, very bright medical student who's a computer whiz um, came to my lab and developed a way of imaging the mi mouse mitral valve. So here I'm showing you the mouse heart. And the blue structure that he can now highlight is the mitral valve of that mouse. He can then remove that mitral valve from this image and show it to you just isolated. And this is a normal mitral valve. We're going to go back a second and have it move again. You can see that the normal mitral valve is this very nice, thin structure. Um, whereas uh, when we looked at our mice with Marfan syndrome, you can see that the valve is really thick. It's folding in on itself. It looks very, very abnormal and actually leaks. So now we had a way of asking, does our treatment make a difference to the mitral valve by measuring the volume of this isolated mitral valve? And what we found in, in our Marfan mice, it, shown in red, is that their mitral valve is twice the size of a normal mitral valve, shown in green. And that if, even if we started Lozartan after birth, uh, by a few months after treatment, the mitral valve is much more normal in size and greatly improved in function. So Lozartan, uh, the answer in our mice again, is that it's also able to address the mitral valve. We're starting to ask, what does TGF-beta do? Why is it bad? What, the, what is it causing the tissues to do? There is one thing that TGF-beta does that's very important as we develop in, in the, as a fetus while we're developing in utero. It causes a cell type called an endothelial cell uh, to become more of a muscle-like cell, something that's called endothelial to mesenchymal transition. This is, this is a normal process. This is the way our body forms heart valves. But we wondered whether the very high TGF-beta uh, uh, activity that we saw in Marfan syndrome was forcing too much of this transition from an endothelial cell to a muscle-like cell, leading to the production of a bad cell type Type that we call a myofibroblast. Myofibroblasts do many bad things, uh, like they stimulate signaling through the bad side of the angiotensin uh, 1 pathway. They lead to deposition of collagen, something we call fibrosis. Uh, they, uh, they have very high levels of TGF beta signaling, and they have high levels of enzymes that break down the matrix of our body. Uh, and interestingly, these are all things that we see in both Loewy's Dietz syndrome and Marfan syndrome. So we wondered whether part of the problem is TGF beta is leading to the formation of too many of these myofibroblasts. Um, this is a very complicated slide, but uh, the, the, what I'm going to uh, 
tell you is that we can now monitor how many of these endothelial cells are becoming muscle cells because we can stain them blue. We can make them turn blue uh, in the tissues and then we could just look at the tissues. So if we look at a normal aorta, this is from a normal mouse, you can see that the valve is blue and we knew that. We knew that the valves come from this process called EMT. But if you look in the Marfan mice, you can see not only is the valve blue, but the whole aortic wall is blue. So this told us that there are too many of these bad acting myofibroblasts uh, in the tissues. And what's really intriguing is if you look, look at where these myofibroblasts are, they're in the root of the aorta, and then as you get a little higher up the aorta, it simply stops. What's exciting about this is that this perfectly matches where aneurysms form in both Marfan syndrome and Loewy's Dietz syndrome, right at the base of the aorta. Um, we've now gone on to ask whether angiotensin receptor blockers, here using a different drug called Telmosartan, a family member of Lozartan, can block this EMT process. When a cell becomes a myofibroblast, it expresses a protein called smooth muscle actin. And you can see that when you stimulate these cells with TGF beta, you see that smooth muscle actin is produced. But if you then give them telmosartan, you see that you can prevent that from happening. Uh, so it's telling us that this lozartan medication can block the production of these myofibroblasts, these bad acting cells in the aorta. And that's perhaps a way that it's protecting the aorta from forming an aneurysm. So I've told you about a lot of landmarks that we think cause Marfan syndrome. High TGF beta activity, high activity of this angiotensin receptor, uh, this endothelial to mesenchymal transition that makes these myofibroblasts, and the, these matrix degrading enzymes that are called MMPs. And if you looked in the literature, there were ways of sort of making connections between these, but we wondered whether there was a better intermediate that might might connect the dots? And the answer was yes, there is. Uh, it's another signaling pathway that's called the ERK or ERK signaling pathway. For example, for TGF beta to stimulate EMT, it has to activate ERK. And for angiotensin 1 to stimulate production of matrix degrading enzymes, it also has to activate ERK. So we wondered whether ERK is activated in Marfan syndrome? And the answer was yes. Here we're using an antibody that only recognizes the active form of ERK. And you can see in our Marfan mice, it's much higher than in a normal mouse. Um, now, uh, we do know that blocking TGF beta with an antibody is enough to prevent the aorta from getting big. So that let us know that if ERK is important, it must somehow relate to TGF beta. TGF beta is still part of the story. And we, uh, th there is a way to explain that. We know that activated TGF beta receptors have the ability to activate this ERK molecule. So we went on to test this and found that if we treat our Marfan mice with a TGF beta blocking antibody, that ERK levels go back down to normal. They're no longer high like you see in the Marfan mice. If ERK is important, it has to also depend upon this AT1 receptor that we're blocking with Lozartan. You know, that's a foundation finding. And that's true also. If you treat the Marfan mice with Lozartan, the ERK levels go way down. The activated ERK levels go way down. So uh, we've also found that our old friend, our protective pathway, the AT2 pathway, normally inhibits this ERK pathway. So it's all adding up that ERK is an important intermediate in everything that I've told you about. Uh, I'm gonna just skip these for a second. We found that ERK activation parallels our treatment effects. So Lozartan, that causes the aorta to shrink over time, turns ERK off, whereas the ACE inhibitor enalapril that didn't have any protective effect doesn't even touch this ERK signaling cascade. 